at our institute, we use the Lumenis M22 for our IPL treatments. IPL is intense pulse lights, and this can be used for a variety of cases, including meibomian gland dysfunction, also predominantly patients with uh, rosacea, facial rosacea and ocular rosacea as well. This particular tool was developed for dermatology, so it has beyond the things that we use, as you can see, vascular treatments, skin treatments, pigmented lesions, hair removal. For the treatments that we want, it's skin treatments, and then I just wanted to walk through how I usually program somebody for a rosacea treatment, full face, rosacea, shallow, then the light guide, there's different crystals that can be put in the front part. The, the machine is pre-programmed, so it has presets for all these different treatments, which means I don't have to remember them. And the treatments vary based on the filter that's used, the energy that's used, how many pulses are given, and how long the pulse is and what break uh, there is between the pulses. And you'll see a little elaboration or explanation as we go from one treatment to the next. Rosacea is a much more intense treatment than dry eye. Yeah, this first step is going to be the most uncomfortable part. That's with a 560 nanometer. Not overly uncomfortable, a bit like having a rubber band snapping the skin. To protect the patient, we put the eye shields on, just a little rubbery adhesive patch over the eyes. Because any pigmented lesion, any red, and any hair, the light will absorb by these and that can cause treatments that we don't want. And the most commonly reported side effect or bad side effect complications with IPL is in people who didn't use eye protection and then had bad iris, pigment loss, inflammation, and problems afterwards. Just standard ultrasound gel being placed on the face. This is, we don't have any fancy warmers. It actually feels pretty cooling and refreshing to have that on the, on the face with cool ultrasound gel. What you saw there was the actual protective glasses that are worn by the actual uh, person performing the IPL. Conveniently labeled here on the side, as you can see with a little sticker, it just tells us that we have a few different eye protections for lasers and IPL, and it's important obviously to use the correct one. One will not protect you from the other. Um, all the treatments have to be placed immediately adjacent to each other, and the crystal has to be at 90 degrees to the skin, and it's an applanation, not indentation. So I use enough that the crystal has maximum skin contact without indenting the skin. Yeah, especially with those sharp edges, you don't really need much pressure, just gentle pressure on the face to get it flat against the face. And it's hard to see at the full speed, but that's actually a triple burst of light every time the button is pressed. And it doesn't take much recovery time for the machine to be ready for the next shot. The benefit of this particular machines, and we have no relationship with them at all, but what I like is that the crystal is cooled. You can also see by the reaction, like this is not a fun treatment. It definitely is uncomfortable. You can see the little jerk and jump, which you need to be ready for. Sadly, even with repeated treatments, the that effect doesn't go away. It's almost like a jump scare that you know is coming. You're ready for it it will still take you by surprise. It's fun watching the different reactions of different patients, and some don't seem to be bothered much by the discomfort at all. When, when I've sat through this myself, I tend to like to laugh quite a bit. I don't know why that's my response to pain, but it's what I do. And this, as you saw, it was a 590 nanometer filter, which is what we use for our dry treatments. Uh, Toyo's developed this particular one with this particular machine. And as I mentioned already, the crystal itself, this is cooled, which means it's very gentle on the skin. Otherwise, with repeated applications that will get hotter and hotter. You notice the first pass that was done included the forehead and along the chin, even a little bit of the upper lip in this particular case. That's not always done, but we did include that for this particular patient. This next protocol with the 590 nanometer wavelength is specific to my bony and gland dysfunction, and it's two passes across the cheek and the nose. And I'm laughing because I'm so well trained that I know already the glasses are not enough. I still close my eyes when I fire. And I don't know if you noticed in the video, but I was closing my eyes. I knew that the flash was coming. I do the same thing. It's pretty good protection or I look away and close the eyes. <laughs> just cleaning off the patient afterwards with all the extra ultrasound gel, get them a little cleaned off. They can, of course, just clean off with a paper towel after, but it's a nice touch to get the excessive ultrasound gel off of there for the patient. And that's another important factor any treatment like this where the patient's uncomfortable talking is important touching is important and trying to keep the atmosphere a little bit light just so they know that the patient you're not trying to punish them you're trying to help them and again certain little for lack of better terms touches make it better and more uh, not more enjoyable but ease more easily tolerable I agree with that completely this is a slow motion just showing that triple flash right there that you see every time the button's pressed it's actually three flashes in one 
And as was mentioned earlier, the delay in timing between the flashes will differ based on the types of treatments that you're doing. And the more you can spread out the energy with longer pauses, the less intense it is. This is a dry treatment, which goes on with t And the um, rosacea treatment is almost like a It's very, very close together. Uh, it's a nice touch after this IPL has been performed that then you can take the patient back to the slit lamp where lid debridement and also meibomian gland expression can be performed. And there's different ways of doing this. Uh, one of the, my initial teaching was that you should scrub the eyelid, which I don't think is necessary at all. The, this is more of a gentle touch along the line of marks that smooths out the eyelid, removes any debris, and also can uncap any capped meibomian glands. There's actually, uh, those, are, those are fun to see when you have an inspissated gland and you just rub off that blockage. And this is what it looks like outside the slit lamp. Just a gentle touch along the actual eyelid margin and then going back into the slit lamp. This is the Expressor. Uh, very cheap, can be purchased for $15 if you want an Expressor from any retailer. Just gentle pressure along the lower lid and upper lids. It's important to try to express glands of both upper and lower lids. Upper lid is a little bit more difficult because uh, as you can see here, I want to stay away from the eye. So I push on the lower lid on the tarsus to evert the lid a little bit. Ideally control it with one finger so that the lid doesn't move. And with the other one, I apply the pressure. Uh, the focus is more a pushing forward and back with my forehead against the microscope, but falling along and visualizing is not easy. On the upper lid, I push uh, above the upper tarsus or right on the edge so that way the lid everts and I slide the uh, the expressor in above the sclera and I obviously want to be cautious and aware of the contour of the lens so I kind of tilt my expressors as the lid contour changes. Oil you can see coming out fairly nicely from these eyelid glands sometimes you'll get a much thicker secretion from the mybum coming out more toothpastey in this case we're getting a fairly good consistency and this was the patient's second IPL procedure. And I tried to grade both how much pressure I apply this I would call medium pressure and the way to find out how much pressure you need is you squeeze until you see something come out and you hold that same pressure and wait. You do not apply more pressure. It's already coming out. You don't need to make it more uncomfortable. The grading of my myobum is usually four degrees. Four is toothpaste. Three is what I would call butter. Two is turbid oil, and then one is clear. This I would call two because it's oily, but a little turbid, meaning not completely clear.